Well hello there, my name is Dustin and this video will cover the next step in the process of creating your own Adobe Captivate 7 eLearning template. Today we're going to start creating the project template. First off, what do I mean when I say project template? Simply put, a project template is the underlying design that carries throughout the entire course and is composed of the elements that are on every single page of the eLearning. For example, the header, footer, logo, background, back and next buttons, course title, page title, page number, and table of contents are usually elements included in the project template. They exist on every single page of the course. For this tutorial, I'm going to use this project template design that I created for the LearningSmith. So how did I go about designing this template? I started by narrowing in on the design standards of the business I was making the design for. I needed to design a template that 1. matched the business's brand and 2. contained all the necessary elements, for example page numbers, titles, buttons, etc. The business's brand standards will help direct your design a great deal. If the business has a style guide for their website, for example, you should get this and follow these standards for your design. The style guide will tell you what colors to use, fonts to use, and how to design and lay out different page elements. Usually you'll need to get this from one of your clients marketing or web people. If a style guide doesn't exist, then visit your client's website to figure these standards out for yourself. Here are some things you should do when you're doing this. 1. Download the logo. 2. Record how the logo is used, such as where it is placed on the page, how large it is, how much white space is around it. 3. Gather the colors that are consistently used on the site for the logo, recurring elements, and fonts. You can do this by taking a screenshot of the image, loading it in a graphic editing software such as Photoshop, and using the eyedropper tool to get the color information. Uh, keep in mind you need the hexadecimal values for the colors to use them in Captivate. 4. Gather the fonts used on the site. So to figure out exactly what fonts are being used, you might have to look at the source code for the website because it's hard to tell just by looking at it. 5. Take screenshots or download any recurring elements and their usage, for example, text boxes, photos, graphics. Uh, 6. Take note of how elements are designed, for example, if they have drop shadows, do they have reflections, transparency, color gradients, things like that. With this information in hand, you can start to design your template. I'm not going to talk you through how to create the design, since that's likely not something you'll do in Captivate. But notice how the design we're using incorporates the elements I mentioned, the colors, styles, and graphics that we saw on the LearningSmith's website. With this design complete, insert it onto the first page of your Captivate project. Click Insert, Image. Navigate to the image's location and click Open to insert it onto the page. The purpose of inserting the design here is to use it as a guide for recreating it piece by piece in Captivate. That way, when we replicate elements in Captivate, we'll know exactly where to place them, how to color them, how large the different elements need to be, all that stuff in order to match the design exactly. In the next several videos, we'll walk through the process of creating each of the elements in the design to complete the project template. That about does it for today. If you want to follow along with these tutorials, you can go to thelearningsmith.com and purchase the Adobe Captivate 7 template. Have a good one!